This is the Stella Luna Motif Edged Crochet Shawl. This is a beautiful crochet shawl worked from the bottom up. The motifs are crocheted first, then the shawl is crocheted in decreasing rows. The pattern is written to be easily adaptable. Add more motifs for a larger shawl. The repeat for the rows is an even multiple of 17 stitches per repeat. You will need two balls of Be So Vivid yarn, my number four worsted weight self-striping yarn. You will also need a K 10 and a half or 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. The sample is shown in two balls of Be So Vivid yarn colorway Miami vibe. Let's get started. I'm going to start by making one of these motifs to show you how to do it, but before we do that, let's take a look at the chart for that motif. And let's look it over so you can understand how to read the chart as well. So this chart begins with a chain five and slip stitch to the fifth chain from your hook to form a ring. Chain three is the beginning of round one. 15 double crochets in the ring and slip stitch to the top of the chain three at the beginning of the round to join. At the end of round one, you should have 16 double crochets. Okay, so let's go back to our yarn now. And for this demo, I'll be using Be So Vivid yarn in a different color. This color is called Unicorn Kiss. And we're going to start by tying our yarn to our crochet hook. You can use a slip knot, a square knot, whichever works best for you. There's no wrong way to do that. And our motif begins with a chain five. Slip stitch to the fifth chain from your hook to form a ring. Round one begins with a chain three, which counts as a double crochet. Then you want to work 15 double crochets in the ring. Double crochet is yarn over your hook. Insert your hook in the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. Let's do that again. Yarn over, insert your hook in the ring, whoops, <laughs> yarn over, insert your hook in the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. You want to do, do a total of 15 double crochets in the ring. Those 15 double crochets plus the chain three count as 16 double crochets for round one. At the end of round one, you want to slip stitch to the top of the chain three at the beginning of the round to join. This is what your work should look like at the end of round one, and you should have 16 double crochets. Round two begins with a chain three, which counts as a double crochet and double crochet in the same stitch. The repeat is chain two, skip one double crochet and two double crochets in the next stitch. You want to repeat that all the way around, then finish the round with chain two and slip stitch to the top of the chain three at the beginning of the round to join. That's the end of round two. Round two begins with a chain three, which counts as a double crochet and a double crochet in the same stitch. Our repeat for this round is chain two, skip the next double crochet, and in the next double crochet, work two double crochets. And you want to repeat this all the way around. At the end of the last repeat, you want to chain two and slip stitch to the top of the chain three at the beginning of the round to join. And this is what your work should look like at the end of round two. You should have eight chain two spaces and 16 double crochets. Round three begins with a chain three that counts as a double crochet. Work a double crochet in the same stitch, two double crochets in the next double crochet. And our repeat for this round is chain three and two double crochets in each of the next two double crochets. You want to repeat that all the way around, chain three, and slip stitch to the top of the chain three at the beginning of the round to join. Round three begins with a chain three, which counts as a double crochet, and work a double crochet in the same stitch. Work two double crochets in the next double crochet. Our repeat for this round is chain three, and two double crochets into each of the next two double crochets. And you want to repeat this all the way around. At the end of the last repeat, chain three, 
and slip stitch to the top of the chain three at the beginning of the round to join. This is what your work should look like at the end of round three. You should have eight chain three spaces and eight sections of four double crochet. Round four begins with a chain three, which counts as a double crochet. One double crochet into each of the next three double crochets. And our repeat for this round is chain five and one double crochet in each of the next four double crochets. You wanna repeat that all the way around. Slip stitch to the top of the chain three at the beginning of the round to join. Round four begins with a chain three, which counts as a double crochet, and one double crochet in each of the next three double crochets. Our repeat for this round is chain five, and one double crochet into each of the next four double crochets. I see a color change starting. Our repeat for this round is chain five and one double crochet into each of the next four double crochets. You wanna repeat this all the way around. At the end of the last repeat, you want to chain five and slip stitch to the top of the chain three at the beginning of the round to join. And this is what your work should look like at the end of round four. You should have eight chain five spaces and eight sections of four double crochet. Then round five begins with a chain three, which counts as the first leg of our decrease stitch. Then we'll work th double crochet three together over the next three double crochets. That chain three and double crochet three together count as our first double crochet four together. Then a chain three pico, which is chain three and single crochet in the third chain from your hook. Our repeat for this round is chain three, single crochet in the next chain five space, chain three, double crochet four together over the next four double crochets, chain three pico, and you want to repeat that all the way around. At the end of the last repeat, chain three, single crochet in the next chain five space, chain three, and slip stitch to the top of the first stitch at the beginning of the round to join. And that completes our five round motif when we're not joining it to other motifs. After I show you how to do this with the yarn, I'll then show you how we join uh, some of the motifs in two positions. Round five begins with a chain three, which counts as the first leg of our first decrease stitch. And then we're going to work a double crochet three together over the next three stitches. Double crochet three together is yarn over your hook, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, then yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, then yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. You now have four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all four loops on your hook. That chain three plus double crochet three together counts as our the equivalent of our first double crochet four together for this round. Next, we're gonna do a chain three pico, which is chain three and single crochet in the third chain from your hook. You can choose to do the front loop, the back bump, the front two loops, whichever works best for you and whichever look you prefer. And then you just wanna be consistent throughout your project. I crocheted into the back bump of that third loop from my hook. Then our repeat for this round is chain three, single crochet in the next chain five space, chain three, and double crochet four together over the next four double crochets. Double crochet four together is yarn over your hook, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. We now have five loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all five loop, loops on our hook. Chain three, pico. And you wanna repeat this all the way around. At the end of the last repeat, chain three, single crochet in the next chain five space, chain three, and slip stitch to the first stitch at the beginning of the round to join. And this is what your finished 
first motif should look like you want to fasten off and weave in your loose ends. Next I'll show you how we join two motifs together. Rounds one through four are exactly the same for all of the motifs. The only difference is how we make some slight adjustments in round five so that we can join our motifs together. And simply, and all we're going to do is replace some of the chain three picots with joining chain three picots. And I'm gonna show you how to do that when I complete this other motif through round five. But we're going to join in two adjacent picots and then going for if obviously the first one you join it doesn't matter which two you do right but going forward from then you want to skip one pico and make sure you join in the next two so that we're creating a type of an arced line and let me show you on the joining motif chart you can see here See how by skipping just one of them, if we skipped two of them, we'd get a straight line, but I'm trying to create a curved line so that we're creating that edging for the half circle shawl. So in order to, the way to do that is to skip only one motif in between the two that we join. So let me show you how to join them now. So I've got rounds one through four done on this motif. Also, look at how pretty the color transition looks when you join motifs in order as you're going through your ball of gradient yarn. So pretty. So now we're up to our third motif and we're starting round five. Round five started with a chain three that counted as a double crochet or the first leg of our first decrease stitch and we'll work that double crochet three together over the first three stitches. chain three pico. I'm going to get past this first one so I can show you on the next one. Chain three, single crochet in the next chain five space, chain three. Okay, so now we're on our next, we're on our first repeat of the repeat of this round, and we're going to start with a double crochet four together over the next four stitches. Earlier in the video, I showed you slowly, step by step, how to do this stitch. Okay, so now instead of the chain three pico, chain three and single crochet in the third chain from our hook, we're going to do a chain three, a joining chain three pico, and we're going to join it in a specific spot. So as we're going around here, we want to, if these two are the joined picots, we want to skip the next one and then join in the next two. So our, we're going to join in this one here. We're joined, skip, join here. And we're going to do a joining pico. A joining pico is a chain one, slip stitch in the adjacent chain three pico, chain one. So that chain one, slip stitch, chain one counts as our chain three for the pico. And then we'll single crochet in that third chain to join. And I'm going to chain three, continue on in my pattern, single crochet in the next chain five space, chain three. And I'm going to set my work down now so you can see what this looks like. Isn't that great? So now we've joined pico to pico, and all we did, we did the exact same stitch pattern for round five, but instead of working just a regular chain three pico, we did a joining chain three pico. So let me show you how to do that once more for joining this pico here. We'll start with our double crochet four together. and work our joining chain three pico. It's chain one, slip stitch to the adjacent chain three pico, chain one, so it's chain one, slip stitch, chain one, that counts as our first, or as our chain three, then single crochet in the back bump of the first of those three chains, and then continue on in pattern chain three single crochet in the next chain five space, chain three. And so for the rest of the round on all of our motifs, we will simply work the regular chain three pico now. This is what your work should look like after you have three motifs joined, noticing that the motifs in the middle will always only have one pico in between the two joins. You wanna repeat this third motif, for the remainder of your motifs, if you're making the shawl the exact same size that I made, you'll need nine motifs total. And if you want to adjust this to make it larger or smaller, you can add or subtract from the nine. 
If you are making it larger, just keep in mind that it will require more balls of Be So Vivid yarn. In the next video, I'll show you how we pick up the stitches along the top edge of the motifs to begin the bottom-up construction of the beautiful and simple shawl. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all, please leave them for me in the comments. Everything we talked about today, you can find as links in the video description below. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you in the next video.